What is the best CPU cooler for the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K? The 265K is actually easier to cool than previous Core i7 chips. That said, you still need a capable cooler, especially if you're planning to push it with sustained workloads or light overclocking. And since not every user has the same needs or budget, I've tested and narrowed down the three best options for this CPU right now. Price information and all the CPU coolers mentioned in the video are available in the description. You can also find more detailed reviews and buyer guides on our website, bestmotherboardzone.com. And before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. Starting our list is the best budget pick, the ID Cooling Frostflow X240 Snow. This is one of the more affordable 240mm AIOs out there that doesn't slack off in any major area and delivers solid thermal performance even when paired with a 125 watt class chip like the 265K. The main reason I went with a 240mm unit over a 360mm for this CPU is because Intel's ultra chips aren't as heat intensive. A cooler like this can comfortably keep temperatures under control during gaming, light editing, or multi core workloads. Even when overclocking the 265K, which can push the TDP up to around 250 watts, this AIO can still handle the heat without throttling or noise spikes. That's a major win considering the price. Design-wise, the Frostflow X240 doesn't cut too many corners either. It features a clean white finish, an illuminated pump head, and relatively quiet fans even under moderate loads. While it doesn't have ARGB support, the simple snow design may actually be more appealing for minimalist or white-themed builds. As for alternatives in this price range, there are a few solid options. If you prefer air cooling, the Scythe Mugen 6 is a capable performer with a compact footprint and quiet operation. On the other hand, if you'd rather stick with AIOs but want better lighting and visual flair, something like the Thermalrite Aqua Elite 360 ARGB White might be a better fit for your build. However, as a baseline choice for the Core Ultra 7 265K, the Frostflow X240 Snow stands out for its raw value and reliable performance, making it a great starting point for budget-conscious builders. To sum up, what I like is the solid cooling performance even at 250 watts TDP, the clean white design, and quiet fan operation under moderate loads. On the downside, there's no ARGB support. Next, my pick for the best premium cooler for the 265K is the Trikes Panorama SE 360 ARGB. For users who want something that shouts premium and don't mind paying extra for it, the Trikes Panorama SE 360 ARGB is an ideal match for the Core Ultra 7 265K. With its larger radiator, Asetek's 8th generation liquid pump and three 120mm Rota Pro fans, this AIO checks all the premium boxes while maintaining lower temperatures than most conventional AIOs in its class. It's the kind of cooler that not only handles the 265K easily, but also leaves thermal headroom for future CPU or GPU upgrades. In terms of real-world performance, it pairs incredibly well with chips like the 265K. In fact, during our testing with the notoriously hot-running Core i7-14700K, the Trix Panorama SE360 delivered the best thermal performance when power limits were removed. That alone speaks volumes for how well it will perform with the Core Ultra 7 265K, which is comparatively easier to manage. So rest assured, your CPU is in good hands, or rather, in cool hands here. But performance isn't the only reason this cooler stands out as our premium pick. The real highlight is the stunning 6.5-inch wraparound anamorphic 3D ammo LED display on the pump block. You can load custom animations or personal media to give your build a unique and futuristic look. It's a feature you won't find on similarly priced competitors like the NZXT Kraken Elite or Lan Lee Galahad, both of which offer solid performance but fall short in terms of visual wow factor. To sum up, what I like is the reliable Asetek 8th gen pump and high quality fans, offers thermal headroom for future CPU or GPU upgrades, and it's one of a kind anamorphic 3D AMOLED display. On the downside, it can be pricey for most users. For my final pick, we have the Corsair Nautilus 360RS ARGB. 
Released last year, it has quickly become a go-to AIO for the Core Ultra 7 to 65K, striking a strong balance between thermal performance, noise control, build quality, and ease of use. While even the budget pick can handle this Intel CPU's thermal load, the Nautilus 360RS stands out not just for its performance, but also for users who appreciate a touch of visual flair. It manages acoustics better than most high-performance 360mm units. And even under stress, the pump remains nearly silent. Under full load, you can expect to keep the 265K below 70 degrees Celsius in most workloads, including Cinebench runs, long Blender renders, and 1440p gaming sessions. Installation is another win. While it doesn't feature a toolless mounting kit, the included hardware is well-labeled and straightforward to work with. Plus, the RS version adds more addressable RGB zones and improved cable management. Now, there are quite a few fan-favorite alternatives in this price range, namely the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 and the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Atmos, but there's good reason to pick the Nautilus over these for the Core Ultra 7 to 65K. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 offers exceptional thermal performance and value, but its thicker radiator and mounting system can make installation more difficult and increase noise under load. On the other hand, the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Atmos has an edge in RGB styling, but the Nautilus wins in performance to noise efficiency and has much cleaner, simpler cable management. To sum up, what I like is the straightforward and beginner-friendly installation process, the excellent thermal performance with the Core Ultra 7 to 65K, and it doesn't fall short on ARGB and aesthetics. On the downside, it lacks a true toolless mounting system.